Want to know how to swim underwater forever? Or what the absolute best way to find diamonds is? Here are 265 super secret Minecraft things you probably didn't know. In this super old snapshot, pumpkins have a truly crazy secret. If you spawn in pumpkin stems that have grown further than eight stages, they'll start to turn into this weird furnace plant. This happens because the textures got totally messed up in the files, but I prefer to imagine them growing those fire flowers from Mario. In any official update before 1.8, you could use this illegal fire item to craft chainmail armor. The weirdest thing was that you couldn't even get the fire item, so it was a completely pointless craft. You can get invisible armor in Minecraft. Right now, I'm completely invisible! And all I'm wearing is this suit. To get this amazing armor, all you have to do is type this command and give yourself 100 armor points. The same as a full set of netherite armor, except totally invisible. Brown mushrooms, dragon eggs, and end portal flames all actually give off light. And the respawn anchor will slowly emit more and more light depending on how much glowstone you put into it. Which I think is awesome! Ah! Zombies are pretty harmless on their own, but when there's dozens of them, they become harder to deal with. So it's absolutely terrifying that every night there's a chance of a literal zombie apocalypse spawning and attacking you and any nearby villagers. If you somehow manage to bring a hoglin through a portal to the overworld, it'll turn into a super gross-looking corrupted zoglin. These things will roam around menacingly attacking any passive mob they see. Don't worry, mate. I'll be angry too if it looked like that. This illegal machine lets you open a door simply by taking off a piece of armor. If you set it up exactly like I did here and turn this lectern to page 8, you'll create an undetectable, illegal entrance that you shouldn't be able to build. Oh, it also activates when a ravager roars, but I think you've got bigger problems if that happens. If you're ever stranded at night surrounded by mobs, you can use a... Uh, composter? But that's right, jumping inside a composter with a trapdoor on top protects you from skeletons, creepers, and all other mobs in a pinch, making this an illegal, completely portable base. But if you want a more permanent house that's just as quick to build, try bone mealing a red mushroom, chucking a floor in, adding some decorations, and you've got a perfect little fairy tale house that definitely wasn't meant to be a base. If you hide a leash chicken underground, you can attach the lead to a fence and make what kind of looks like a floating balloon house. You can add some actual balloons up top, and you've basically got the house from up. You know those little waterfalls that come out of mountains? They're perfect for secret entrances. Just break one block behind the source and dig down a little, and then you're free to build anything you want down there. Just be careful not to place any lights too close to the entrance, because that looks sus. If you use invisible item frames with the fake block trick from before, you can create one-way glass that you can use to secretly spy on all of your friends. This one definitely feels illegal. Uh-oh. It was a creeper! When you leave and rejoin a world, you get a couple seconds of invincibility. So if you find yourself in a bit of a spicy situation, you can leave and rejoin over and over and swim to safety like you're made out of obsidian. The shield is one of the most overpowered items in the whole game. It can block fireballs for God's sakes. But did you know that if you go through a portal while holding right click, you'll be permanently blocking in the next dimension, letting you sprint and attack while literally invincible. You can send secret messages with skulk blocks. Skull usually spreads to stone blocks when it absorbs experience, but it won't take over blocks made with slabs. So simply write some letters out with slabs and find a way to cover it. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell just how low durability your tools are while mining, but if you hit F3 and H at the same time, you'll get the exact number of blocks it can mine left, you nerd. A campfire smoke is kind of pathetic. It only lasts for about 10 blocks before fading away. However, if you place a hay bale beneath it, it'll use that extra fuel to create a 25 block high smoke stream. It's obviously super cute that foxes can pick up and steal your items, but did you know they can actually use them too? If you try killing a fox while it's holding a totem, it won't die and just runs away from you like the monster you are. Luckily, this feature doesn't work on dogs. <laughs> Ever see this mob? Because if you have, you're one of the lucky ones. This is called the Clux Room. And yes, it drops mushrooms. This mob was released exclusively for Minecraft Earth. And with a 2% chance of naturally spawning, you don't want to lose this guy. But mushy? Mushy, why? If you're in Minecraft Bedrock Edition and you catch on fire, don't panic! Just craft a campfire, and you can light it for completely free just from standing on it. Oh man, what a good trade-off. Now that's what I call making the best out of a bad situation. In the early versions of Minecraft InDev, you could stack up to 99 items in Minecraft. This was later changed by Notch to the iconic 64 items you can hold today. Hey, you do you, bro. Everyone knows if you hit a zombie piglin in a swarm, it's not gonna be a fun time for you. 
you. However, if you manage to one-shot that same zombie piglin with an overpowered weapon, all of the piglins will get confused and stop targeting you, allowing you to finish them off one by one. Hey, it's fine, they're zombies, so die piglins. Did you know if you splash a potion of poisoning onto a creeper, then let them explode, you'll end up seeing a lingering poison effect? This can be used for blowing up your friend's base and then finishing their dogs off. Thank me later, you monster. If you're near an ocean with your friend, have them crouch down in front of the water and pay attention to their name tag. If you look closely, you can see the water is transparent, allowing you to see anything you want. So if your friend's got a secret base, we will find it and we will kill your dogs again. Talking about the ocean, if you take an iron golem and try to sink them, you'll realize they literally can't drown. This means they can stay at the bottom of the ocean for years without taking a single hit of damage. Man, that's just sad. Yeah. This can't be said for snow golems though. They don't even get to enjoy a swim. Man, that just feels wrong. Honey blocks have a crazy feature barely anybody knows about. They're actually just a little bit smaller than a normal block, meaning you can shoot arrows between them. Thank me later, fortress builders. Dolphins are one of the smartest animals in the world, and it's no different in Minecraft. If you give a dolphin enough fish, it'll actually begin to swim to the nearest underwater chest as thank you for feeding it. Endermen are already one of the most creepy and powerful mobs in the game. They absolutely didn't need another buff to make them even stronger, but they got exactly that. Usually an enderman will just teleport out of the way of an arrow or other projectile. First, if they've got nowhere to teleport to, the arrow will just bounce off like it's nothing. Cheaters. Luckily, there is a way to make endermen completely powerless. Yeah, sort of. Sure, you can just place water at your feet, but that's old news. If you accidentally trigger an enderman by looking into its eyes, don't look away. For some reason, endermen won't move at all as long as you hold eye contact. And what do you do from here? Uh, good question. Moving on. Breaking blocks like clay underwater is so annoying! Sure, there's the old door trick, but that's no fun compared to TNT. But Mello, TNT doesn't work underwater! Wrong! All you need to do is place sand or gravel on top before lighting it, and it works perfectly. It barely even damages you. You can actually do the opposite as well. Placing an anvil on top of TNT before lighting it will stop it from breaking any blocks at all. It doesn't even damage the anvil. And again, you take almost no damage from the blast. Ever wanted to create a nuclear bomb? Well, you're in luck. All you gotta do is place a rail and stack multiple TNT minecarts on top of each other. This glitches the game and creates an insane amount of explosive power. Just don't touch it, or you'll probably end an entire race of villager. When thinking of unbreakable Minecraft blocks, bedrock is probably first to come to mind. You can't break bedrock with lava, TNT, or even a literal nuke. So would it surprise you that all it really takes is snow? In 1.17, if you place a cauldron and fill it up with powdered snow, then place a block above it and click the cauldron, it just disappears. Wow, nice job, Mojang. The wither can't swim, making it impossible to spawn them underwater. However, there's a catch. If you swim to the bottom of the ocean and build a little bunker, you can spawn the wither boss at the bottom of the ocean. And when released, it will kind of just stay in the ocean like a weird fish. So hey, if you want an invincible three-headed fish that does nothing, you know what to do. Did you know you can break Minecraft by predicting exactly where life lightning strikes land? Well, most lightning strikes are spontaneous. If you load specific chunks at the right time, as discovered by a group called the Prototech server, you can actually predict and direct lightning strikes. This is extremely useful, making it really easy for you to farm OP mobs, such as skeleton horsemen. From there, you can collect all their loot and end up a rich man. You can also just farm your friends, which is another really good option. Feel free to add their dogs to spice things up a little. If you've ever been to a village, you'd know pillagers absolutely hate Eight villagers. I mean, like, Mojang literally coded them to find and murder their babies. But you can actually use this to break Minecraft. As pillagers are programmed to be very dumb, very, if you put a villager in a minecart and have him circle around on a railroad, a pillager will forever go in circles, never able to reach him. <laughs> Imagine bullying villagers. Losers. Wait! Minecraft seeds are randomly generated, meaning you could find entirely different kinds of structures depending on which world you spawn in. Normally, a good seed starts with spawning near a village or you finding yourself close to a desert temple. However, the best kind of seeds are the ones that absolutely defy all types of Minecraft logic, having weird lava structures like this or a literal glitched ender portal. These seeds completely break and defy every rule of Minecraft. So if you want to break Minecraft, try loading up one of these seeds. That'll give you a good excuse to blow up your friend's base. And their dogs. Don't forget the dogs. <laughs> 
Hey, what are you doing? It was the Minecraft seed. That doesn't even make any sense. Big Lim Bartering is super overpowered, but it's so <laughs> slow. Luckily, Bedrock Edition pros found a way to speed it up by a hundred times. All you need to do is grab a sticky piston and a gold block and took it up to a super fast clock. And then when you drop the gold, the Piglin will pick a piece of gold up every time the block moves, giving you supercharged trading. Swimming with dolphins, Grace, is even faster than using a boat. The only drawback is that it's quite difficult to breathe down here. However, there is a secret solution that lets you literally breathe underwater. If you punch a mob while swimming, you'll stand up for a split second. When you head to the surface, you'll be able to breathe like you're scuba diving. Another way to breathe underwater is to bring a bucket and simply just spam it against the block in front of you. The water will disappear for a split second at a time, letting you grab all the air you need. Look, everybody knows about the water bucket clutch now. I've been doing it since before Dream was even born. But in the nether, doing this is a little bit harder. For some weird reason though, snow and powder snow doesn't melt here, which means you can clutch with it. And it looks way more stylish than just riding a boat down. How on earth am I supposed to get back up? Well, if you have a second bucket and some leather boots, you can pillar up by placing two blocks of it, picking the lower one up and repeating. Just make sure not to crouch at any point, especially over lava. They actually behave almost exactly the same as a vindicator named Johnny, a secret mob that definitely doesn't keep me awake at night. Here's Johnny! Duh! Grandma, what? If you build an end portal in this specific way and fill the northern frames in last, the end portal will generate in completely the wrong place. If you want it to actually work, you have to place all the frames from the inside. But I think this looks way cooler. If you type flower into the creative menu, it'll only show you these ones. If you want to see all of them, you need to put a hashtag in front. For some reason though, type Typing hashtag blocks only shows you these four nether blocks. I think I'm having an identity crisis. Think mob farms are the best way to get XP? Think again! Getting achievements actually gives you experience each time you get them. So if you manage to find all the nether biomes, you'll get a nice reward of 19 levels. Speedrunner Feinberg even used this in his All Advancements world record to get the levels he needed to enchant his trident. This dude's got like five of my brains in there. Each block in the game has a hardness level that tells you how difficult it is to break or blow up. And it actually hides a pretty crazy secret. If stone has a hardness of 1.5 and obsidian has a hardness of 50, what do you think bedrock would have? A million? Infinity? Turns out it's actually minus one. I'm sure there's some crazy nerdy code reason as to why this is, but come on, look at me. I've got no idea. Using maps and item frames, you can build huge 2D replicas of fake blocks and create super detailed hidden entrances you can use to hide almost anything. Check out this desert. See anything wrong? There's actually two hidden bases here. One inside this cactus and one behind this sand block. All you need to do is place the maps inside an item frame placed on a sign and your base is suddenly invisible. You can actually make a base in the void. Sure, you can't place blocks down here, even in creative mode, but there's an illegal workaround using a chicken, leads, and boats. You can spawn shulkers down here and walk on them as if they're normal blocks. They'll even use levitation to send you back up. Look, all of us have wanted to live inside a video game at one point, and with some glass, terracotta, and buttons, you can. Imagine seeing this while playing on your Nintendo Switch. Hang on. I mean, I'm trapped. Let me out. Let me out. Huh? Oh, God, that's even worse. This base can't be blown up, even with 1,000 TNT. Surrounding your base with waterlogged stairs makes it completely protected from all explosions, including creepers, completely going against what Notch intended. Sorry, bro. It's no secret that Mojang is sometimes a little lazy when it comes to textures, with bedrock just being an overly saturated stone and endstone being an inverted version of cobblestone. But I bet none of you realize that the jungle logged texture is just a rotated version of the oak log. Speaking of being overpowered though, did you know that creepers can climb ladders? I'm already terrified of getting ninja bombed by them in ravines. Why do I have to be scared of this now too? But creepers have been hiding another secret from us too. If they're affected by a potion effect from an arrow or, you know, a potion, when they explode, they'll leave a lingering pool of that potion effect wherever they stood. What can you use this for? Don't ask questions! Moving on! No matter how high they fall from, cats will never take full damage. You can send them all the way from build limit to bedrock and they'll walk away like nothing happened. Conversely, dogs do take damage. And anvil damage! It's just so beautiful. Zombified piglins are terrifying to fight in the nether, but if you manage to get a weapon powerful enough to kill them in one hit, they won't get mad, and you can take them out one by one. Flower forests are one of the prettiest biomes in the game, and one of the easiest places to farm all the different dyes too. But strangely, the flowers don't actually generate in random places. Each area in this biome can only spawn a specific flower, which means you can map it out using bone meal to create a really cool effect. Bees in Minecraft actually work
work really similar to how they do in real life. When they sting you, they don't just lose their stinger and end up dying shortly after. They actually leave it inside you. It's easiest to see when you turn invisible and ugh, when are they adding tweezers to the game? If you're ever being chased by a mugger and quickly want to hide your diamonds, just throw them in grass pass. If you place hoppers under the grass covering, the diamonds will automatically transport into them, making your escape smooth, calculated, and absolutely foolproof. And he's found the hoppers, hasn't he? Oh, come on! Here's a useless fact you didn't know. Wearing a creeper mask reduces the chance of a creeper spotting you by 50%. But don't get too cocky, as they still explode! In Snapshot 15W31A, Mojang pretty much added one of the dumbest things possible. Usually, to respawn the Ender Dragon, you need Ender Crystals. Pretty hard to obtain. That makes sense, right? Well, for this snapshot, you literally could build a clay creeper face, and the dragon would respawn. Yeah, I'm not even joking. I'm baffled. Bamboozled. If an iron golem is low on health, you can heal them by tapping on them with an iron ingot. Don't confuse this with hitting them with an iron ingot, as that will certainly end up killing them, and we don't want that. If you've ever tried building a railroad before, you would have definitely come across a train turn that looks something like this. Well, if you take a look at the corner of the train track, it actually looks very similar to an iron pickaxe. Bet you didn't know that! When a player crafts their first enchantment table and enchants their first weapon, assuming you pick the lowest enchant level on a bow and arrow, the first enchant will always be power one. <sighs> what a useless fact! I don't want power one! <laughs> Ass one. And in case you don't have a big enough iron supply to waste on literally blowing up, there's a cheaper alternative in placing TNT on top of a half slab instead. For some reason, this also reduces the blast radius significantly. But unfortunately, you still take quite a lot of damage. Are you one of those weirdos that prefers using donkeys over horses for the extra storage space? First of all, why are you using horses in the first place? It's 2023, man, get a Lytra! But secondly, llamas are a way better option. They can have up to 15 inventory slots and form groups of 10 that follow each other around. Using shulker boxes, you can transport up to 4,000 stacks of blocks with you. That's this many blocks, more than you'd ever need. And if you need another reason to make the switch to llamas, check this out. While horses and donkeys just sink like rocks when you try to ride them in water, llamas can swim. You still can't control them or anything, but if you need a fancy pool float or something, llamas work perfectly. Fireworks can be used for a bunch of things these days, but I bet you never thought of making a cannon with them. That's right. Fireworks launched from dispensers actually do damage to mobs, meaning firework crossbows are out, and this is the new best way to take out mobs. Although it doesn't look it, villagers can actually wear armor. They can even wear mob heads and pumpkins, but nobody wants to see that. You can use dispensers to equip it to them, and even put enchantments on each piece of armor, including Thorn's enchantment. God, that's an embarrassing death message. Oh, and by the way, that mob head thing works on piglins too, and it's somehow even worse! Everyone knows how cowardly villagers are, especially around anything that even has a possibility of hurting them. But I bet you never noticed they actually sweat during raids. At least, I heard that sweat. They really don't have much to worry about though, because some of these villagers actually have morals? These scary ex guys called Vindicators refuse to kill baby villagers, so at least when they grow up, they can rebuild the village. <laughs> Uh, never mind. Right. We all know the Trident is the most useless weapon in the entire game, but they actually have a secret use only pro players know. If you charge up a Riptide Trident underwater with a sword in your hand, you'll turn into a supercharged torpedo that can kill almost any sea creature. And if you've got an Elytra, try taking to the skies while it's raining and using the same trick to literally become a missile that destroys any mobs above ground too. Gas tears can be super annoying to collect. I don't think I've ever fought a gas that wasn't over a giant lava pit. That's why the best players bring a fishing rod to the nether that they can use to pull mobs back over dry land to take out with a sword. This doesn't just work for gas either. You can stop these pesky blazers from getting away and it even lets you get sick kills on piglins. That'll teach him for stealing my gold. Enchanting can be really annoying when the bomb slot just shows up with a breaking or an enchant you just don't want. But you can fix it with a wooden shovel. Turns out it's true. If you enchant any useless tool at level 1, it'll re-roll the entire set of enchants letting you make the perfect set of gear. One of the most common items you can get 
set in ruined portal chests are these seemingly useless fortune gold pickaxes. This thing will break after like three iron ore. What's the point? Well, if you're in the smartest 0.5%, you'll know that pickaxes don't break when destroying crops, so you can use the fortune enchant to get extra resources from your farm for free. If you've ever tried shooting through a door, you'd know the arrows won't go through the whole of the door, even though there's clearly enough space for an arrow to fit through. But with items like pistons, chains, or a slanted staircase, you'll be able to shoot right through. So yeah, make your doors as chains so you can shoot intruders. This game makes no sense. Make sure you shoot the dogs. Want to be immortal in Minecraft? Well, there's a game-breaking tactic in the game which makes it impossible for you to die. An emo's worst nightmare. To do this, just craft a boat, place it on the ground, and get in and out of it really quickly. It'll trick Minecraft into thinking you're still inside of the boat. From there, you can jump off high buildings, live underwater, and blow yourself up without taking any damage at all. And the best thing is, if you ever get trapped or get lost, you can always just press shift to teleport back into the boat. Now that's pretty cool, depending on your age, and if you like Minecraft. Pretty subjective, really. But even cooler than an immortal glitch is a building that will literally morph you into an unkillable soldier. If you're familiar with anarchy servers, you have definitely heard of 2B2T. Anarchy servers have absolutely no rules, meaning you can do anything. Rob banks, grief bases, or kill lots of dogs. But the one thing you cannot do is building a lag machine. But obviously, players decided to break it, building this huge structure which was over 100 blocks tall and looked amazing. However, it didn't go to plan, as instead players near the machine had their hitboxes disappear, making them literally immortal. This machine was mysteriously removed, never to be seen or spoken about again. This is a regular nether portal, and this is a heather nortal. Wait, what? Well, Minecraft has a history of weird nether portals, there's never been anything quite as weird as this one, literally. To do this, you need an update suppressor, which is a structure that allows you to force skip block updates by basically bugging the game out of functioning. And let's be honest, I have no idea how you do this, and you probably don't care either. So after some off-camera building, here it is, a Heather Nortal. Now that's one of life's greatest achievements. When Mojang added XP, they expected you to farm it by killing edible mobs your dogs, and leveling up the normal way. However, what Mojang didn't expect is if you put a ton of mobs all in the same place, they will die of entity cramming. And you can get that sweet, sweet XP. And with Sweeping Edge, you can kill the rest of them with one hit, making it possible to create a self-sustaining mob farm that just feeds you XP. Huh, so that's how McDonald's works. So if you really really want to break Minecraft? I got something for you. If you create a world with the only blocks being ladders, they will defy logic and not let you climb as intended, making you fall indefinitely into the void. This is probably the most useless thing you could ever do. But hey, from a distance, this looks pretty cool. And oh wait. My game crashed. That was worth. I feel very accomplished. Instead of spending ages converting all your concrete powder to concrete before building, just build any walls or floors out of the powder and flood it afterwards. And if you're ever left with a ton of wet sponges for whatever reason, don't dry them in a furnace. Instead, take them to the nether where they'll dry out instantly in the heat. Then you can use an enchanted hoe to pick them up super fast and get straight back to sucking. God, why did I just say that? Most people strip mine in a two by one hole like this, but there's actually an even more efficient way to do it, as long as you're not claustrophobic. Place a water bucket or trap door and start crawling. Then mine forward and you'll be in a one by one hole. This is faster because for every two blocks you break, exposing ten different possibly diamond filled blocks instead of just eight in the other method. Just trust me, okay? It makes sense! When you're out in the end raiding cities, shulkers can actually get really annoying, especially as you get further up the buildings. So before heading into one, grab some chorus fruit. If you get hit by a bunch of pellets and end up floating high above the ground, eat some chorus right before before you fall, and it will teleport you back down without dealing damage. You have to do it with levitation active though. I learned that the hard way. This does, however, also work with elytras, allowing you to get back to the ground super quickly and painlessly. How many times have you tried leaving an animal pen just for all of the mobs to follow you out and escape to the gate? Well, I have a fix! You can use an L-shaped layout like this, a wall block or a carpet to create exits that only the player can use. The best part is that it means I don't have to remember how to craft those stupid fence gates! Spyglasses aren't 
that useful on their own, but if you use Optifine, you can use that as well to get a super zoom. It's in F1 will remove that annoying overlay too. Ever wanted to learn how to become invincible in Minecraft without armor? If you eat a god apple and then a regular golden apple straight after, you'll keep some of the absorption even after the effect wears off. This means you can repeat this as much as you want to gain literally hundreds of hearts. It doesn't come cheap, but come on, only the top 0.1% smartest people know this. You're rich anyway! You know how you need two water buckets to create an infinite water source? Well, you know nothing! <laughs> Sorry, that was me. But seriously, you only need one now as long as you have either kelp or a cauldron. Using this setup, you can place kelp here to magically create two new sources, and you can use water bottles to fill a cauldron and conjure another bucket full. Setting up a farm for food can be super difficult early game, but there's a hidden cheat code only 1% of people know. If you're brave enough to challenge the nether and make a run to a soul sand valley, you can farm the fossils for tons of bone meal you can bring back with you for a head start on all your farming needs. Silverfish don't seem that dangerous at first, but it's not uncommon to find yourself in a stronghold severely outnumbered in just a few seconds. But silverfish only spawn when a player deals damage to them, meaning you can just use lava or a flint and steel to totally avoid spawning them. Did you know there's a way to get extra inventory space instantly? Simply turn touchscreen mode on and use your number keys to put some items in the crafting grid. Then click off your inventory and you've got four extra slots just like that. Unfortunately, this was patched out in 1.19, but you can still use this feature in any other update. Splash water bottles seem like the most useless item in the entire game, but they're actually the only way to put yourself out in the nether. You can also use cauldrons for this, as water placed in them won't disappear in the nether. This even works the other way around, letting you place lava underwater. It's not quite as helpful though. But this isn't even the only way to get fire and water to mix. The other method requires bubble columns and fire charges. If you place a ton of soul sand in the water like this, they'll bob around in the water as if they're not just totally breaking the laws of science. Dripstone technically counts as an entity while it's falling, meaning you can grab it with a fishing rod and yank it midair. This doesn't have much use outside of really messing with your friends, but it also works for sand, gravel, and best of all, TNT. Back when beads were added in 1.15, there were actually two secret textures hidden in the files for extra honey items. The first was for a crystallized honey item, and the second was this yellow block called the wax block. These items never made it into the actual game, but it does bring the concept of crusty honey into my head, and I don't like that. Slimes can actually let you duplicate name tags. Well, technically at least. If you use one on a big slime, the name will actually pass down to the smaller ones. And since these things can't despawn anymore, you can use them to really get your message across to a friend. Oh god, there's so many of them! I'm always finding myself running out of room for storage, but who said we're not allowed to just build a house out of barrels or chests? Problem solved. Now I can get all of my items when- Hey! Give that back! Okay, okay, everybody knows about the painting entrance by now, but what if we use that to our advantage? All people do is walk into the painting to see if there's anything hidden, but this painting has a pressure plate behind it you can activate with an item. I guarantee you, nobody will find this one. Let's face it, everybody's realized that Amethyst is pretty useless, so I don't think anyone would mind you setting up camp inside one. They're the perfect size to fit all your decorations in, and crimson wood goes perfectly with the Amethyst color. That's just cherry wood if you're living in the future. Gathering materials for a base can take forever. Why not just cut that part out entirely? Leaves are the fastest block to collect in the game, so just shear a bunch of them and build your house out of those. I'd make sure to set up a few uh, lightning rods though, because that could go very wrong. But if you want to take it even further, try building this thing instead. It's got all of the blocks you need for a home, including a brewing stand and an anvil. And you're even safe from mobs in the bed too. I don't know if I'd call it a base though, it's more like being homeless. You can make a perfect little cage for parrots by pushing a piece of stained glass on top of them. For dogs, try a solid block instead. Foxes can also eat chorus fruit if given the opportunity, and presumably get really confused after. You can go upstairs much faster if you've got auto jump enabled. Finally, maybe a reason to use this. Every Minecraft player's worst nightmare is having a creeper sneak oh, in or spawn in their base and having it blow up everything. But to make this a little less disastrous, you can waterlog your chest to make them blast resistant. Speaking of, if you're looking for a block to build your TNT base farms out of, Waterlogged leaves might be for you. They're totally blast resistant and super easy to get a hold of. Just be careful you don't accidentally flood your redstone. End portal flames are one of the only impossible blocks to break in Minecraft, right? Wrong! Using a red mushroom plate just right, you can grow it with bone meal and use it to totally delete the frames. You can actually send minecarts to the nether. All you have to do is set up train tracks leading directly to another portal. Load those babies up! When they disappear, you can go through the portal and find all the glorious minecarts you sent over. The flower, Lily of the Valley, looks the exact same from any angle you look at it through. 
It's sort of like a Minecraft illusion, which means the lily is always watching you. Don't kill that baby pig. You know it doesn't give you meat. Don't kill it! Here's a nice trick to try on a blind person. If you cover lava with string, nearby players won't be able to hear the lava, meaning that sucker won't even know what hit him. Oh, I'm such a great YouTuber. Subscribe, by the way. Yes, this is a call to action. The lily is watching you! To cure a zombie villager, you need a splash potion of weakness and a golden apple. And a bed? Apparently being near to a bed helps to speed up the process. Not sure why that works. Well, I can think of a few reasons. <laughs> the axolotl is probably the cutest animal in Minecraft. But did you know there's an axolotl so rare, just one in 1,200 axolotls spawn this way. The blue axolotl is the rarest mob in Minecraft. Would you look at that little guy? Huh, you thought I was gonna kill it for comedic effect? I'm totally above that. I lied! You can get floating Minecraft tracks by placing them on trap doors and flipping them down. Aside from this just looking really weird, you can make some pretty crazy traps with this, as all the rails disappear at once when anything updates them. While testing this, I realized you can actually walk underneath trap doors even though you're way taller than this gap. And your head even sticks into the trap door. Yo, Mallow, is that a fresh cut? No, 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 no please! Shulkers are one of the most mysterious mobs in Minecraft. I can't even figure out what they're supposed to be. But it turns out if you throw an invisibility potion at one, all is revealed. The shulker's shell disappears, leaving the shulker itself floating in midair. I'm still no closer to understanding what on earth this thing is, but I guess he's, like, cute. It's common knowledge now that villagers are the best way to farm items, but it takes so long to cure them. But it turns out if you place iron bars near the zombie villager, you can actually speed it up a bunch. The wiki says this works with beds too. But when I tested this, it seemed like it was fake. But let me know in the comments if it works for you. Speaking of beds, did you know that there used to be a sky dimension planned for Minecraft? It was supposed to be a magical realm in the sky that you could access through dreams. Each time you went to sleep, there would be a chance you'd wake up here instead. Unfortunately, this idea was eventually replaced by the end. But I'd love to see them bring back this idea. While well, you were busy having sniper duels or hiding away praying they wouldn't see you, skeletons have been hiding a dark secret. Okay, it's not that dark, but around 11% of them are actually left-handed and hold their bows differently differently to the rest. Apparently, this is to mirror the amount of real people who are left-handed. Also, even though wither skeletons can't spawn naturally with a bow, they still have a line of code that lets them shoot fire arrows when they're given one with commands. Weird, right? Have you ever noticed that the sky actually changes color during the wither fight? That's right, as soon as the fight begins, the horizon turns a deep, ashy gray, and some clouds become much darker. Too bad nobody will ever see this because we all fight the wither underground now. Like mole people. On Minecraft Bedrock Edition, you can create a literal piece of art. Using a command block to place hundreds of end crystals, the crystals will actually stack, creating something that doesn't even look like Minecraft. Just make sure you don't run into it. Or walk. Or crawl. Just, just stay away! Over the years of Minecraft, farms have gotten more and more advanced. We went from farming melons to a fully functional wither farm. Using TNT, arrows, and insanely precise timing, these people built a machine able to get arrows to supersonic speeds, allowing you to one-shot the wither and farm its resources while AFK. In fact, there's even a functional wolf farm, which offers a new home to live dogs. Just turn it on and there we go. Hey, what happened to all my dogs? I didn't kill them. I, I, I did not. If you're persistent and dumb enough to cover your whole world with hoppers, your game will become extremely buggy, lagging, glitching. And as a bonus, if you drop a beacon onto one of these, your game will literally die. That is my grandma. Just kidding, she's right here. It's it's me, the grandma. I'm alive. See you, grandma. That being said, do not put beacons into random hoppers. Not only are beacons valuable, but there's a small chance of your computer exploding. If you want to destroy your world in a stylish way, you can try and place a bunch of iron trap doors. Then add skulk sensor blocks below that. From there, just blow it the hell up. Or fly above it and drop a single block into it in a super stylish manner before seeing your game slowly die. You're very weird. Shut up, grandma! Let's set the scene. You hear the music. You 
feeling nostalgic. So you go back to 1.9 beta Minecraft to load your old world. Then you realize something is terribly wrong. And it's not just your dating life. The ender portal looks like... Seriously, what the hell is this? This block was the old ender portal frame. And it looked really messed up. Sort of like an ice block mixed with grass. The ender portal looks a lot better now. And boy, am I glad they changed it. Ender pearls are awesome for moving around. And are even better in the nether. Here's a few tips to make you a pro at using them. If a pearl flies out of render distance, it won't teleport to you until you load it again. This means you can throw a pearl wherever you want, lower your render distance, and travel wherever you want. Then when you want to leave, raise it again, and you'll be teleported to wherever you threw the pearl. Pearls can also be used to easily traverse the harsh terrain of the nether, but it can sometimes be super risky if you're purling over lava or a long fall. However, if you're purling against a wall, position yourself like this on the edge of a block, and click as fast as you can while the pearl is flying. When the pearl hits, you're instantly placed a block below you, saving you from certain death and making you feel really cool. If I was to ask you what the most OP weapon in 1.8 PvP was, I bet the last thing you'd say is fishing rod. But you'd be right. Back then, the bobber actually dealt knockback just like a bow would, and you could activate it instantly. This meant you could use it to stop them sprinting and throw them into the air a little, letting you start combos super easily. There was also a glitch that literally let you do double damage using a fishing rod. If you hit them with someone with a rod and then immediately with a sword, they'll take way more damage from the sword hit. If your tools are running low on durability, you can combine two of the same type together to get a new tool with extra durability. It's only around 10%, but this can be the difference between killing a zombie or being stranded in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Cauldrons might seem like one of the most useless items in the game, but surprisingly, they do actually have a use. For people who are too busy to make a huge cow farm for leather but still want a change of clothes every so often, you can clean the die-off leather armor by washing it in a cauldron. Then you can re dye it after. Evokers are a super powerful mob despite never hitting you themselves, but you can actually predict what spell they're gonna cast next. If he sends out white particles, it means he's spawning vexes, and you can run and get some hits in. But if they're gray, it means he's summoning fangs, and you should probably run! <laughs> and before you head through the portal, make sure you bring some TNT, as you can use it to farm ender pearls really easily. Simply build a pillar above a small pit like this and stare at as many endermen as possible. Once you've trapped enough, place the TNT down and light it for near infinite pearls. You can even hold a looting sword while the TNT explodes to get even more. But what if you're like me? You struggle to even find the stronghold. Speedrunners have a solution. Once you're fairly sure you're nearby, try throwing just a single eye and placing a line of blocks until you think you've run past it. Then head to the side of a line and throw another eye. Follow the path until you hit the blocks from before, mine down, and you'll be right where the stronghold is. You know those huge annoying trees you sometimes get from oak saplings? If you place a single block seven blocks above the sapling, they'll never grow again. You can also use this setup to only get the big ones if you're a soldier. Speedrunners even have ways to make nether portals instantly without diamonds. Find a lava pool like this, then place a block here with water next to it. Break that and place blocks exactly like this on the side of the pool. Place water right here and place lava in the formation of a portal around the side. Remove the water and you've got an instant nether portal with just a single bucket. There's also a way to do it in an underwater ravine, but I'll leave that one to the pros. It's not because I can't do it, okay? You see these weird little scribbles on the end crystal? It turns out if you look super closely, they actually kind of spell out Mojang. How does Snow has made mountain biomes actually kind of dangerous now. And ain't nobody got time to wear leather boots out here. But there is another way to deal with it. Next time you venture out to the snowy slopes, grab yourself a flame bow. As any powder snow you hit with a fire arrow will instantly melt and disappear. Glow Lichen actually has a secret use I guarantee you didn't know about. It can actually completely block water from flowing. Just the same as signs or pressure plates. But more importantly, it can do the same with lava and won't ever burn. Even though it's a plant. Hmm. I give up. Sea pickles are one of my favorite plants in the whole game, but a lot of people seem to forget you can place them outside of water. They won't give off light anymore and lose their little pickle stem thing, but they do make for a nice decoration or extra piece of color somewhere in your build. Oh, and you can place paintings behind them too. What's even crazier than this though is that you can also place lily pads outside of water too. Kind of. As long as the block is waterlogged, you can place them down. This means they can go on trap doors, scaffolding, slabs, drip leaves, leading to some really cursed effects. It can also be placed on ice, which is like, I guess, waterlogged? I really don't know anymore, man. Sometimes the hardest part of building a hidden base is actually finding a location first. So try this sneaky idea out. Nobody ever goes into these scary water-filled lush caves, so try and take a swim down there yourself. Place a door and get to work. But come on, a regular door just isn't gonna cut it. So instead, try placing a pressure plate on the other side of a corner like this, connecting it to a piston and using an arrow to activate it. It works underwater too. Most people think underwater bases have to be super complicated and hard to build. 
God. First, you can actually just chuck a bed and some chest down, and it works fine. If you can hold your breath. Honey blocks are actually just a tiny bit smaller than a regular block, which means you shoot directly through them. It means you can also use them to create secret perilous pathways to your hidden base. Bonus points if you chuck some dripstone at the bottom to really make it dangerous. For some weird reasons, you can phase straight through shulker boxes if you open them in a certain way. All you have to do is stand on top of one with a roof above your head, and it'll push you down and through to whatever you've built below. Speaking of shulker boxes, they're actually invisible when you get far away enough, just the same as beds and chests. So to create your very own totally invisible base, just set up a couple hundred blocks, build a shulker box platform, place a bed, and you're golden. Nobody will ever find this. But sky bases can sometimes be a little annoying to reach. So for a super accessible and equally hidden base, try this. Head to any snowy biome and stick some scaffolding underneath a random block. Put the snow back and you've made a completely undetectable underground base. And one that looks really funny to enter too. Chests usually can't be opened when they've got a block above them. So explain how this works. It's actually just a stair placed backwards. This also works with any other block that's not just as big as a normal block, such as farmland or path blocks, and leaves you a bunch of new opportunities to hide away your goodies. Skeletons can usually see you from about this far. It's around 16 blocks, which to be fair, is pretty good for a life form with bones for eyeballs. But if you chuck on a mob head like a zombie or skeleton skull, this distance gets much smaller and allows you to get as close as eight blocks away without them seeing you. The only problem is that now I can't see anything. Speaking of skeletons, there's actually a super clever way to get music discs that I bet you didn't know. Their arrows will turn to fireballs when shot through lava and can even light TNT. This means you can collect a bunch of creepers in a pit and blow them all up with a skeleton like this and end up with dozens of music discs almost instantly. Hitting a mob with a channeling trident in a thunderstorm makes possibly the worst noise in the game. It's so loud! Luckily, this crazy lightning generator isn't quite as loud. You can make it with a piston, lightning rod, and channeling trident, and having a bunch of them allows you to do, well, not much really. But I guess you can trap your friend in a box like this and give them an electrifying experience. <laughs> Sand or gravel counters entities when falling down, meaning dropping it into a portal will build a nice little sandcastle. Not only that, but you can do the same with lit TNT and even dripstone. If you hit a zombie piglin next to a nether portal in the overworld, an extra zombie piglin can spawn from the nether, even if one isn't nearby. So how does that work, Mojang? Hmm? Can you explain yourself on that one? Your trident will always come back, as you have the loyalty enchantment. However, if your entire inventory is full while throwing it, it won't come back to you and will leave you forever. Or it will do whatever this is, which probably counts as some kind of assault. That's a lawsuit waiting to happen. If you feed a cookie to your parrot in Minecraft, they will die. No joke. I feel bad for the kid that figured that out. Well, this wasn't always in the game. Mojang later realized cookies are actually toxic to parrots. So change the game to be more realistic. So if your friend gets a new parrot, you know what to bring. In Minecraft's April Fool's update, Mojang added an item called the Ankle Monitor, which, when put on, works like the curse of binding, making you unable to take it off and slower whilst wearing it. Minecraft Hood Edition coming out in 2023. Putting carpets on top of fences lets you jump over them while keeping animals in. But did you know there's an even better way of doing this? Animals can jump over trap doors just fine going one way, but if they try to leave, they walk straight into them. This makes it 100 times easier to collect animals and get in and out your pen without 1,000 chickens escaping through the gate. Oxalotls are up there with bees for the cutest mob in Minecraft. They come in these four normal colors and one super rare shiny blue axolotl that's actually a reference to the Pokemon Mudkip. And speaking of fish, kind of? Some cruel player discovered that if you take fish out of their favorite aquatic home and place them on a bunch of slime blocks, they'll start to bounce really high super fast. However, it's not likely to last long as there's a few, shall we say, occupational hazards for our bounce swimming friends. The only thing I like more than this little guy has to be the frogs that got added in 1.19. I just wanted to show you what its eating animation looks like in slow motion. That's it. That's the fact. We're all pretty aware of Minecraft's food chain now. Creepers hate ocelots, foxes hate chickens and rabbits, Mallow hates dogs, but one toxic relationship you probably don't know about is that polar bears hate foxes. It doesn't usually go too well for the polar bears, though, as foxes are way faster. And because foxes can step on powder snow just fine, the bears are sometimes baited in and get stuck. On the topic of foxes, though, I have to know. Am I stupid for not knowing this next one? Foxes don't just attack rabbits and chickens by 
walking up and biting them. They also sneak up and pounce on them by jumping super high into the air. What's crazier is that if they land on snow, they'll actually get stuck and shake around trying to free themselves. I swear these guys have been in the game for ages and I've never seen this. I must be an idiot, right? Slime blocks, honey blocks, and hay bales can all be used to reduce fall damage when using a drop shoot. But they all have drawbacks. Instead, put a waterlogged chest at the bottom. You won't take any fall damage, you don't bounce, and it doesn't slow you down. Hey, you ever wanted infinite TNT? If so, here's the solution. If you build the following contraption, you'll be able to duplicate TNT forever. Something about the coral reef glitches the TNT, allowing for a devastating bug. This is something commonly used in Minecraft Warfare, creating flying machines with infinite TNT to nuke your enemy's base. So if you want to break Minecraft with a bang, try this out sometime. Everyone knows you can't place water in the nether. Or can you? If you build a time machine and travel all the way back to Minecraft version 1.6, you'll need to stock up on ice blocks. Why? Well, my friend, in this version, if you break ice in the nether, you get water, allowing you to technically turn the nether into a water park. My life is finally complete. And I've got a cool time machine to boot, so that's pretty cool, yeah? <laughs> I think it's cool, yeah. Okay, so villagers aren't the smartest mobs, but did you know they're immortal? Just kidding, did you really believe that? But they kind of are, because if you make a glass container and have a villager go in for a little nap, you can surround him all with lava and watch him die! <laughs> Wait, how the f*** did he survive? Really, Mojang? I'm trying to have fun here and be an evil man. Guests are annoying. Let's be honest, they're ugly. Hurt your eyes. They suck. That is until you use them to turn them into a gassed turret. Yes, you heard that right. You can trap gas and turn them into your own turret machine. By clicking fast, you're able to direct the fireballs to wherever you want, making it the perfect defense for infinite TNT flying machines. And also just destroying your friend's house and their dogs and their dog's dogs. Trust me, bro, it wasn't me. My grandma can vouch. I hate you. See, who doesn't like buried treasure? But using a map can be really annoying. However, pros know how to find it without a map. First, head to a beach biome and lower your render distance to five. Then hit shift and F3, followed by the numbers next to game renderer, levels, and entities. If there's orange on the pie chart, there's a chest nearby. Then just turn around slowly until the orange is biggest and head towards it till it disappears. In the chunk behind you at 9-9 in the chunk, there should be a buried treasure. Or just use x-ray. Don't tell anyone I said that. Soul sand water elevators require every single piece of water to be a source block. So to save tons of time, try just placing a piece of kelp at the bottom and bone mealing it. When you break the kelp, all of the water will instantly be turned to a source. Did you know there's a way to fly infinitely with an elytra without using a single rocket? After taking off, you can fly up and down at around a 45 degree angle. This will let you build up enough speed and distance to fly forever, or at least until your elytra runs out. You can even avoid using a rocket to take Take off by using a Riptide Trident, or an entity cramming setup like this that throws you high into the air without a single gunpowder. Spyglasses don't get anywhere near as much love as they should, and I think that's because of this annoying GUI that shows up when you use it. But if you hit F1, it'll completely remove it, giving you a clear zoom that's actually kind of powerful. But Molo, real pros just use Optify. Shut up, nerd! Fortune is probably the most valuable enchantment in the entire game. It duplicates diamonds for God's sake! But did you know? there's another use for it that makes it even more overpowered. If you enchant a hoe or any other tool with Fortune 3, you'll get way more crops when you harvest your farms. Instead of an average of about 4 carrots per crop, you'll get about 5.5 with Fortune, as well as tons more seeds from wheat. Coal can smelt 8 items each, but a coal block made out of just 9 coal can smelt 80. That's... Uh... Even know yet. One free coal per block. That means if you've got an auto smelter set up, it's almost always worth it to use coal blocks instead. As long as you make sure that what you're smelting is divisible by 80 so you don't waste any blocks. Oh, and speaking of lily pads, the direction they face depends on the location of the block and not the way you look when placing them down. It changes block to block and seed to seed, meaning you can never predict which way a lily pad will face. You know how you can preload crossbows with an arrow or firework? Well, it turns out you can do this in bulk. Fill your inventory up and then spam drop and fire the crossbows to turn yourself into a literal machine gun in Minecraft. If you look closely, all of the regular tools in the game have a regular brown stick for their handle as they're all made with overworld materials and wood. But the netherite tools instead come with a darker crimson handle, reminiscent of what a crimson stick would look like. It's nothing crazy, but it's cool to see the attention to detail Mojang sometimes shows. In 1.19.2, there was a glitch that allowed you to completely bypass full damage. If you jumped from 35 blocks or higher and hit crouch at exactly the right 
time, you'd be able to walk away like nothing happened. Ow, it's really hard though. Obviously, we know that piglins and the overworld turn into zombified piglins, and hoglins turn into zoglins. But what do you think piglin brutes turn into? An armored zombified piglin or some superpower mutant bus? Nope, just a regular zombified piglin. He gets to keep the axe though, so he's got that going for him, I guess. Natural structures are basically just pre-built houses for you to use. Shipwrecks and jungle temples work great, but my favorite is the desert temple. Not only does it come with multiple rooms and doorways, it even has a section up top that perfectly fits a fully built beacon. What a time to be alive. Here's how to make a completely hidden base beneath your bed. Dig a hole beneath where your bed will go, add some trap doors up top, and two minecarts placed like this on top of some ladders. Then add two beds on top and surround them with more trap doors. Trust me, nobody's gonna find this. And if they do, ask them why they're sleeping around your bed. You could also just use a stair below the bed, but that's way easier to see. Now, obviously, the best way to hide a base is to simply just put it behind a wall. But breaking and replacing the wall every time is so annoying. But luckily, there's a solution. If you create a stone generator that replaces the block that you break, all you'll have to do is break the blocks each time, and they'll magically cover up the entrance every time. I guarantee every one of us has tried to build one of these tree houses in the jungle, but let's face it, they look terrible. Instead, head to a tiger and try this out instead. You can build it in two minutes for super cheap, and it keeps you safe from all the mobs. Ah! Except phantoms! The cold biomes offer a bunch more cool houses too, including this ice spike base I built when I was just a lad. It's even simpler than the last one. Just clear out some ice, chuck a door on, and now you can pretend you're Superman! The powder snow you can find in these biomes makes for an awesome hidden entrance too. Not only can you hide some in the ground like the scaffold entrance, you can create a hidden ladder up a cliff with it that you can only climb with leather boots. We can take another of Etho's ideas and use a lava curtain to make a hidden entrance. He uses ender pearls, but come on, it's a man cave! Be a man! Ow, ow, it's so hot, ow! Did you know that you can actually totally skip the ender dragon fight? By building a simple flying machine like this, you can fly all the way to the outer islands without so much as touching the ender dragon, allowing you to raid as many end cities as you want for all the loot you could ever dream of. However, the only way out is, uh, down there. So do this at your own risk, I guess. Snow golems will die almost instantly underwater, while iron golems will sink but just kinda chill? This is already strange enough, but it gets even weirder when you realize you can actually spawn snow golems underwater, but not iron golems. But while we're down here, here's another cool underwater fact that might even save your life. Next time you find yourself stranded outside at night, swarmed by mobs and unable to sleep, try heading into a river or ocean. You'll be able to chuck a bed down and sleep just fine. You can even breathe down here for some reason. Everyone knows that the weather is immune to arrows in its second phase, but I bet you didn't know that fireworks will still damage it, letting you sit back and relax as you watch the show. Oh crap, wait, it can still hit me! Baby foxes might be the cutest mob in the entire game, which is why I'm sorry that I have to show you this next fact. And some older versions are actually so adorable and tiny, and if they find themselves in water, their mouth is actually underwater, and they'll end up drowning. Poor thing. Want an easy way to find netherite? Try this out. All you need is a fire resistance potion, a few blocks, and a grindstone. After jumping into the lava, swim upwards to see through the entire thing. And ta-da! Enjoy your ban. If you stack minecarts on a singular rail, you can create a nuclear bomb! The minecarts will glitch out and move on their own. Try getting rid of the rails? Well, the minecarts don't care! In fact, it'll keep on going and blow up an entire village if it wants. What a rebel. While night vision is usually very useful, if you splash yourself with a night vision potion in the end, everything will instantly turn pink. Thanks, guys. That helped a lot. Well done. The Minecraft soundtrack changes depending on what time of day it is, meaning if you want a certain soundtrack to play, just use the command and change it back to the time of day you remember it playing at. Oh man, this track is so beautiful. <laughs> Oh, who said it today? Who? Huh? I know karate! Because soul sand isn't a full block, you can't really place falling blocks on top of it. Or at least without having your blocks turn into fragile block entities. If you've ever created a staircase, you'd realize how annoying it is to have to go up and down and back up again. Who invented stairs? I will fight you! But there's a way out of the never-ending pain. Because if you place a torch on the block you're using, you can place a block on the side. And if you keep recycling your torches, you'll soon enough have a really long 
long staircase. Just don't look at it from the side. Which huts have the ability to spawn, you know, witches. But also, each time one is generated, a black cat will also spawn inside. They do have a tendency to walk off, but this is actually one of only two ways to find this sleek variant of Kitty. The only other way is wait until a full moon and venture out into a village, where each cat has a 50% chance of spawning as this magical black version. Have you ever run out of gold for powered rails because you never collect it when you're caving? Don't worry, so has literally everybody else that plays this game, but that means there's a solution! Putting a saddled pig in the minecart makes it go much faster on iron rails. It's kind of weird because you have to press the backwards key to move forwards, but it works just fine otherwise. Piglins are primal, tribal creatures and do everything together as a group. Most people know they hunt down hoglins together, but you probably didn't know that there's a small chance that they'll dance together after taking one out. In Bedrock Edition, if you name a boat in an anvil, it'll actually show up as a name tag above. Cool, right? I bet Java Edition has an equally cool mechanic. Oh, it doesn't show up. And it's gone completely. But there's actually an even more efficient way to use coal, and that's by simply just crafting a campfire. With just one coal, you can cook infinite food by right-clicking it on the campfire. Each one takes 30 seconds to cook, but given you can do four at once, it's actually faster than a furnace too. In PvP games like Sky Wars and Bed Wars, a simple act of bridging is incredibly important, so pros have developed tons of ways to bridge as fast as possible. There's speed bridging that requires timing your crouches perfectly, breezily bridging where you spam A and D and click around 15 times a second. God bridging where you literally just walk backwards and time your clicks perfectly. And the most insane of all, tele bridging. There's really nothing else to say about this other than you should probably go outside if you can do it. There's also this one, but like, come on. Villages are notoriously hard to move around. You either spend the next decade of your life using boats or just pray they do what you want them to. But there's actually a hidden pro strategy you can use to get hundreds of villagers to go exactly where you want. If you destroy every nearby bed, and place one down near a bell where you need them to move to, ringing the bell will summon every nearby villager to that bed. Speaking of villagers, the best survival players know that they're actually the most overpowered thing in the game. If you find a librarian and destroy its workstation, you can place it down to repeatedly change its trades. And given that their first trade is usually an enchantment book, you can keep doing this until you find exactly the enchantment you want. You can even kill and cure it to get a perfect deal. Losing your base in Minecraft is a real problem. It can be super hard to keep track of in a literary infinite world, and coordinates can be really hard to remember. That's why it can be a great idea to not only craft a map, but also name a banner, place it down, and right-click it with the map. This will give you a permanent marker you can follow home that's way cheaper than a lodestone compass. One of the oldest ways to mark your base, though, is to simply just pillar up super high with blocks, giving you a beacon to follow home. These pillars can be useful in tons of places, but can be really annoying to tear down. So if you don't have scaffolding, try using gravel or sand. Then whenever you want to get rid of it, just place a torch or pressure plate below and it will delete itself in a very satisfying way. But the skeletons are one of the most annoying mobs to farm in Minecraft. They don't even spawn half the time. But if you're in single player, try lowering your render distance and simulation distance to five chunks. This will force all mobs to spawn where you can see them, letting you find farm skulls way easier. Once you're ready to fight the wither, whatever you do, don't spawn it above ground. Trust me. I learned the hard way. Instead, dig a 40 block long tunnel underground and spawn it in a chamber at the end. If you stay at a safe distance, you'll be able to take it down super easily without getting hit once. Well, good play as well. Cakes aren't really the best food source, but they do work as a great decoration. But did you know they're even better now with the addition of candles? Now you can place a candle on top of the cake to add just a little bit extra color to the room. For redstoners, slimes are super valuable, but they can be so hard to find. Swamps are usually the best place to look for them, but sometimes you'll go just to be met with nothing. Well, it turns out that's because slime spawns in swamps are actually based on the moon. So if the swamp is dry, try waiting a few nights until it's full, and a swamp will be covered in the things. It can be really hard to find exactly where the buried treasure is once you're nearby. The map isn't really clear, but if you think you know the general area, hit F3 and make these two numbers say 9 by moving to the right block. Dig down and voila! Seven fish and an emerald. Great. You can actually use enchanting tables as a way to catch intruders in your base. Anyone trying to snoop around and steal your items is probably going to be invisible, but the enchanting tables, magical powers, actually show you there's someone nearby by opening up and facing 
sing straight towards them. Grandma, what are you doing in my house? Oh, right. Ah! Every single item in the game has a shape that goes from the bottom left of the item slot to the top right, from tools to fences, name tags, and even amethyst shirts. That is, except for the Echo Shard, which does the exact opposite and faces the other way. I love this feature because it shows that the item really is an echo of the regular items and could even come from some strange alien world. Ever wondered what causes those creepy cave sounds to play? It's actually not random. It relies on this section of the F3 screen called Moon that increases over time when you're underground and decreases when you're near light. When it gets to 100%, a random cave sound will play and it'll reset back to zero. There are actually four secret paintings hidden in the game files that you can't even get normally in the game. The paintings are earth, wind, fire, and water and can only be spawned in with this command. Apparently, they were only added in to promote Pocket Edition, but I really hope they get added in fully eventually, as they're so much cooler than this. Tinted glass is the only glass block that actually drops an item when you break it normally. I guess the Amethyst enchanted it with mystical powers. With all the carpet traps out there, most people are terrified to even step foot on them, which makes them perfect for the most illegal hidden entrance yet. You can jump on turtle eggs through carpets, and it'll break the carpet as well as the egg, sending you straight down to anything you build below. Sea turtles are endangered in real life, by the way, making this one actually illegal. If you place perfectly white maps on sea lanterns or glowstone, you can make a super trippy infinite room. Most people use this to troll their friends, but honestly, I think it makes a super cool house. Just try not to get a headache smacking into the walls. You can use a similar trick to make custom wallpaper for your house. Depending on your dedication, you can make custom blocks, simple patterns, or super ornate drawings rivaled only by glazed terracotta, whatever that's supposed to be. Using a hoe or a shovel on dirt will send a pulse to a hidden observer, letting you create wild hidden bases like the one Mr. Insane made in his world. This does seem like a lot of effort for a single player world though. What are you hiding it from? Hero Brian? Something slightly more practical is this instant base idea that uses nothing but saplings. At the start of your world, put some oak saplings down where you want the walls. Once you're back from mining or looking for food, your house will have literally built itself. Everybody knows that naming a mob dinner bone flips it upside down, but I bet you didn't know there's a second secret name that does the same thing. If you call the mob Grum with two M's instead, it'll do the same thing. This was added at the same time as Dinnerbone, so I kind of feel bad he didn't get as much attention. Poor Grum. If you're like me, you probably still manage to get lost even with a map. But if you name a banner and place it down at your base, you can right-click it with the map, and a marker will pop up showing you exactly where home is. Remember the last time you used a furnace minecart? Yeah, me neither, but there is actually a way to use them that kind of makes them useful, I guess? If you push a furnace minecart into a chest minecart, they'll actually couple together, allowing you to transfer a huge bunch of resources easily without choker boxes. It all completely falls apart the second a corner or hill appears, but hey, they've got the spirit. Honey blocks are so sticky that mobs like villagers can't actually jump off them, meaning you can use them to hold them in place. And if you've spent ages pushing villagers around or using boats to move them, I'm about to blow your mind. You can't bait villagers around with seeds or carrots, but you can get them to follow you simply by having a chat with them. It seems they're so excited to trade with you that they just won't leave you alone, letting you bring them pretty much wherever you want. And if anything was to uh, happen to your villagers, don't use potions of weakness to heal them. Instead, you should use tipped arrows with a crossbow. If you have a high enough piercing level, you can shoot through multiple villagers and then pick the arrow up after allowing you to cure hundreds of villagers with just one arrow. Ever seen this before? Well, if you're from the future, then maybe. Because Mojang added bamboo blocks in the recent 1.20 snapshots. Having both bamboo and stripped bamboo as separate blocks. I like the same bamboo. Bamboo, bamboo. The old bamboo block required four bamboo to craft, while the new one needs nine. This makes them pretty expensive, but at least your house will look cool. If you have a pet axolotl and don't have a name tag to make him your pet, you can scoop him up with a bucket and literally put him into an anvil. But don't worry, we aren't gonna murder him. If you're in a village raid but don't manage to kill all the raiders, that's a cool way to easily find them. If you ring the village bell and wait a few seconds, all remaining raiders within a 40 block radius will all light up with a glowing effect. This one is already semi-known, but hey, your boy's gotta eat. Did you know not all skeletons hold the bow in the same hand? In fact, 11% of the skeletons are left-handed, while 89% are right-handed. Mojang paid close attention to detail here, as this is the exact proportional percent in real life. 
If you drop a sword near a fox, they can actually pick it up. This means if a fox is holding a sword while attacking, it'll deal the same damage as the sword, making it incredibly overpowered. The best way to move villagers isn't to use minecarts or boats. It's actually just to use a bell. Villagers will all flock to a bed whenever a bell is rung. So if you remove all nearby beds and place just one wherever you want them to head to, they'll go straight there as soon as the bell is rung. Clever, isn't it? What's even smarter is this invisible elevator that uses wind. Crazy, right? Huh. Uh, you didn't see that. Okay, fine, it's not a wind elevator, but it's still really cool. If you place a bubble stream in a corner behind two honey blocks and then maps in item frames on the honey blocks, you'll create a hidden elevator that really does look like magic. Sometimes you just need a ton of filler blocks for a project. So what's the fastest block to farm in bulk? Well, you can obviously build gigantic wood, cobblestone, or moss farms. But if you just want something simple, try trapping a snowman and using stone shovels to instantly obtain hundreds of snow blocks you can use for whatever your heart desires. If you've ever built an enderman farm, you know it can be pretty tiring to constantly click on Enderman to get XP. But did you know that splash water bottles actually hurt Enderman? That means if you get them low with full damage, you can just chuck one every so often to gain tons of XP and infinite satisfaction. I could literally do this for hours. Speaking of splash potions, have you ever noticed that you don't get quite as much effect time as the potion says? Well, that's probably because you're throwing them at the ground or a wall. If you throw them straight up so they land on your head, you'll get the full advertised time. Most people only place carpets on, you know, the floor, but they can actually be placed in way more places than you realize. Above string, water, slabs, buttons, other carpets, crops, and even fire. Although that one might not go too well. There are so many potions in the game now, so many that I barely even remember how to craft half of them, or any of them. But that's not an issue for this secret potion, literally called the Uncraftable Potion. As the name suggests, you can't craft it or even obtain it in survival mode. Drinking it does absolutely nothing, but it looks kind of pretty, I guess. Something you can craft that I bet you don't know about is the End Rod. I've spent so long long raiding end cities for these, but it turns out you can just craft them with some chorus fruit and a blaze rod. The more you know, I guess. Tipped arrows are more useful than you realize. You can use harming arrows with a piercing crossbow to deal tons of damage to multiple mobs at a time, and even collect the arrows after. And if you hit yourself with a slow falling arrow, you'll fly super high when using a riptide trident, allowing yourself to float for miles with an elytra. And speaking of elytras, remember when firework rockets didn't exist so we had to use punch bows to boost ourselves? Or am I just really old? You're old, son. Walking over or punching redstone ore activates observers, meaning you can create hidden cave bases really easily, or even hide some under a carpet or snow for a hidden entrance that'll probably just end up getting activated by a chicken or something. For something a little more secure, try hiding a hopper beneath a block and having a special item filter that only opens with a block named a certain way. Hoppers work under snow, slabs, soul sand, or even path blocks, but you can take it one step further by using a hopper minecart instead, as it'll pick up items through literally any block in the game. Hoppers can take items through path blocks because they're just a little smaller than a full block. We can take advantage of this in another way by hiding a lever under a tree next to some dirt and using a shovel or hoe to reveal it. Since the addition of Deep Slate and all the new caves, strip mining has pretty much become a thing of the past. Thankfully, there's a few ways to make it way easier. Firstly, this number on the F3 screen shows you exactly how many air blocks are ahead of you, meaning the higher this number is, the more likely it is there's a cave in that direction. And to make it easier to find exactly where it is, try turning on subtitles. Not only will it make it easier to see which sounds are being played, but it'll even give you arrows pointing in the direction they're coming from. Raiding in cities can get pretty dangerous very quickly if you find yourself floating high above the ground, and that's why the best players know to always carry chorus fruit. If you find yourself in this perilous position, eating one will instantly teleport you down to the ground safely. Just make sure you still got the levitation effects. It doesn't go well otherwise. Sometimes a regular fuse of a TNT just isn't long enough to get you to safety. So if that's the case, try crouching and setting the block on fire instead. Instead of instantly lighting, it'll burn for a bit before lighting. Trust me, this isn't a troll. Trust me. I'll never do anything like that. Anyway, did you know trains actually exist in Minecraft? And I'm not talking about minecarts. Well, technically they're called caravans. But if you attach a lead to just one llama, all nearby llamas will quickly run into formation and start following you around. With enough patience, you can breed llamas to have 15 slots of storage space, meaning you can carry around 150 shulkers worth of items with just a single lead. And when you're done with these llamas, if you attach the least one to a fence and then, uh, d dispatch it. It'll lead the lead on the fence, giving you an extra bit of detail to decorate with. Swift Sneak is already an amazing enchantment, but did you know that if you run and jump into your sneak instead of just sneaking normally, you'll sneak around 33% faster? I really like saying sneak, did you tell? Speaking of sneaking, I just really wanted to say that, you can create secret ladders out of powder snow that only you can use. It's literally as simple as placing a column of powder snow somewhere and chucking on some leather boots, and only you will be able to climb it. 
What item do you think is used in the most crafting recipes in the game? Wood? Maybe sticks? How about diamonds? Turns out it's actually iron ingots. They're used in 34 different recipes, which is more than anything else. Well, kind of. With the introduction of chiseled bookshelves in 1.20, wooden planks are now also used for 34 recipes in Java Edition. Riveting! What do you think the best item for fighting mobs is? Axes, maybe? Some people prefer swords or bows, but you're all wrong! Boats are actually extremely powerful, as you can just chuck one down and completely immobilize any mob you want. They even stop Endermen from teleporting. You can name a chest in an anvil and the name will actually show up in the GUI. It even keeps its name when you break it, unlike any other block in the game. No matter how many are nearby or how close they're watching you, if you one-shot a zombified piglin using something like a Smite 5 sword, other piglins won't get mad at you. Just make sure you don't have Sweeping Edge on too. Walls don't have much of a use other than, you know, being walls. And to be fair, nobody even really uses them for that either. Either way, they actually have a use in redstone. With a setup like this, you can place a single wall right here to instantly send a signal hundreds of blocks down. I know that doesn't sound that insane, but I know like 1% of you guys are freaking out right now. Mobs in Minecraft have gotten pretty good at pathfinding, but there's still one thing they can't seem to understand, and that's minecart rails. For whatever reason, if you surround yourself in tracks, zombies just don't know what to do and will freeze on the spot. The same goes for spiders, vindicators, iron golems, and even crit- Wait, wait, wait! And if you didn't know some of these facts, subscribe now, because I need money.